Praise the Lord and welcome to our weekly edition of Wednesday Night Time in the Word with Pastor William Whitfield. Now let us prepare our hearts to go into the Word of the Lord. Praise the Lord everyone. This is Pastor Whitfield coming to you on this Wednesday, January 28th, welcoming you to our Wednesday Night Time in the Word weekly broadcast on social media. We pray that the word of the Lord will be a blessing unto you on this evening, and we pray that your time with the Lord will be beneficial and profitable to you. So let us pray as we go into the word of the Lord on this evening. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ for all that you're doing in our lives. We thank you for the many things that you're doing on behalf of each and every one of your people, regardless of where they are in the world our faith, our hope, our confidence, our trust, and our dependency is in you. Our faith is ever increasing, and our might and strength in you is because you say to the weak that they are strong. So therefore, we are dependent upon you for everything that there is in our lives. So Father, we pray now, as we go into your word, we pray that you would open up the word to us today that you will cause us to hear what heaven is to, has to say to us, and that we will be all the more blessed as a result. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. As we go into the word of the Lord today, as mentioned, we're looking at Exodus, the 32nd chapter. We're going to try to cover as much of it as we possibly can in our time together this evening. And if the Lord should say so, we'll either finish it up on this coming Sunday or next Wednesday evening, based upon how the Lord leads and guides. Amen? So let us go into the word of the Lord, and I'll go verse by verse as we look intently into God's word. So reading at verse number 1 of Exodus, the 32nd chapter, And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together, unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods, which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we walk not what is become of him. And again, looking at the Exodus process and how God is dealing and working in the lives of his people. And one of the first things that is noticeable here is that and when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount. So one of the major things here is that the people who have not had such a relationship with the Lord. So the children of Israel from previous teachings and from the scripture you will be able to gather that they were in Egypt for over 430 some years for 30 some years in reference to Joseph, and then the next 400 years or so, they were in Egyptian captivity and in bondage. And those of you that have been following our series know that now the children of Israel are free, they're in the desert, in the wilderness, so to speak. God has called Moses up to the mountaintop to spend time with him. And for 40 days and 40 nights, Moses is in the presence of the Almighty God. He took with him several other men, Joshua being one of them, who are now on the mountain with him. But Moses is called up to an even higher elevation to be alone with the Lord for those 40 days and for 40 nights. And during that time, while he's away, the people come to, to the understanding or come in agreement that they don't know what has occurred or happened to Moses. And as a result of just, just sitting by, waiting for him to come back, they made a gross, erroneous assumption that Moses had abandoned them and had forsaken them and was leaving them to their own devices and their own means and their own thought processes and to continue their deliverance process on their own, so far from the truth. When God is dealing with a leader, many of us who are not spiritual will become frustrated 
because we will not fully understand or comprehend what God is doing. God doesn't always move quickly. There are times that God moves and takes his time. One, he is building the leader up, putting in them those that stay before the Lord. Putting in them what they need and what they require in order to leave the God's people completely, thoroughly, correctly, with wisdom, with knowledge, with understanding, and the sensitivity to the will of God, to the mind of God, to the spirit of God, that they would always understand what God is calling for. And they will never refrain from following the will of God and the mind of God. These are people that have developed such a relationship with him that their ears are attuned to what his voice is saying. Their senses and the spirit are heightened to the point that they can sense what God is doing, how he has moved, because they have spent exclusive time with the Lord. Not saying that God is only exclusive to one man or to the leaders, but there are times where God calls them up to a place or to be alone or to shut themselves in, to be away with him one on one. One of the major things that I do annually is take the time at the very beginning of the year. May not be the first week of the year, but during the first month of the year, at least the first few weeks of the year, I break away from everything and everyone and get away and go away alone to be with the Lord for the purposes of praying and seeking him for directions to be able to hear clearly instructions that he is given and that the path and the direction that he would have us to go in for the incoming year. And many leaders and many churches go on fast at the very beginning of the year, so that they can be sensitive to the will of the Lord for the new year. What is God doing? What is God saying? What is he speaking? How is he moving? What are the things that he wants us to be attentive to and looking out for and seeing this year? And even as the year progresses, it is always a good idea to refresh oneself to the point that one does not become stagnated in their relationship with God to the point that they assume that God is saying something when he is saying something completely different. It also sets the tone for the year. It also sets the tone for any new ministries, not necessarily at the beginning of the year, but any time that you're entering into something new and different by the will of the Lord and God is speaking to you, it is always a good idea spiritually to separate oneself unto God to hear what God is saying. It means there's a time that you turn off the TV, turn off the radio, turn off the cell phone, although we're living in a day and age where it's so difficult to do. Turn off all the electronic devices and put away everything that you would normally do. If it means that you must fast, fast. If it means that you must lay prostrate before the Lord, lay prostrate. If it means you must sit quietly before the Lord, if it means that you must stay up countless numbers of hours at night. Do what is necessary for you to pursue God and to hear from God and develop that relationship and the closeness with him so that he can speak to you so clearly that it'll be beyond the shadow of a doubt exactly what it is that he's calling for. Now, earlier this year when I came went away about a week or so ago, God gave me instructions regarding a particular situation, a particular individual. And the Lord allowed me to see how the devil was raging. But yet, by being attuned to the Lord and not being distracted and staying in the presence of God and keep praying and asking God what to do, he gave me instructions. And those instructions turned out to be very fruitful, very profitable and yielded results immediately. And the results are ongoing and are gaining momentum and is causing things that were going in one direction to now to change courses, to go in the directions 
of the prayerfulness and what God was saying. There are sometimes in your quiet time, you have to let God know where you are and what you're wanting, what you're desirous of, and to the surrender your will to the Father to find out if your prayers are in alignment with His will. And if your prayers are not aligning with the will of the Father, it is a perfect opportune time to change the course of your prayers and allow Him to speak to you clearly as to what direction you really need to go in. That type of relationship and connectivity to God takes time. Don't allow your thought processes, your imagination, your responsibilities or things that people are demanding of you to separate you and cause you to come out of that prayer closet or chamber before the time. Don't come out prematurely. Stay there in the very presence of the Lord until He has spoken clearly the things that He wants you to know and to hear and to appreciate and to grasp and to grow in, and to be in you. There are some times God wants to remove the old oil and put in some new oil and cause that new oil, hear me clearly, that new oil to permeate your entire being and your entire soul. Now, just imagine Moses up on the mountain with God. God is not only speaking to him, but God is equipping him. God is filling him with new oil. God is firming up those weak places in Moses' life and instilling in him the vision for this people and how to lead them, how to direct them, giving him explicit instructions on things that he must accomplish before the people, for the people, on behalf of God. We cannot begin to profess or say that we understand the mind of God until we have spent what God qualifies as sufficient time with him to be released into the purpose for which he has called us, ordained us, gifted us, and caused the passion to arise in our hearts. This is the thing that the people did not understand about Moses and about God and the dealings of God to the point that they became restless in their souls. I want to make that clear. They became restless in their soul. Not in their spirit, but in their soul. And in their flesh. Their souls had not yet been illuminated with the Word of God because the Word of God is forthcoming. Let me say that again. In this scenario, in Exodus, the 32nd chapter, the Word of the Lord to instruct them on how to live completely. God has begun it. But God is about to give the full totality of the Word through Leviticus, through Deuteronomy, through Numbers, and through all those books of instructions in the law of God. Moses has just received all the instructions on how to erect the tabernacle and all of his furnishings and every item that will be contained in it, complete instructions. And I believe that God takes it a step further and communicates to Moses in such a way 
the complete vision of what everything means and the heavenly vision that it equates to and that is equal to and the magnitude of it that this thing was not going to be done in a couple of hours, a couple of days. Just the descent alone up a mountain took time. Where God is causing your spirit man to be elevated to a place that now you can stand before people and begin to communicate what God has said to you. It takes time to descend the mount of God. It takes time to develop through the courses of prayer to the point that God would have us to receive the level of prayerfulness in our hearts, in our spirits, and in our souls that would solidify within us the connectivity of being close to the Father. One major thing about Jesus Christ is that he spent 40 days and 40 nights fasting and praying before God. Moses' same way, Moses' time with the Lord was equated to the same way as Jesus Christ. Here are two major deliverers. And let me deal with that for a moment. If you walk in the deliverance ministry, it is extremely important, paramount, that you often separate yourself and spend time alone with the Lord. The deliverer in you always wants to rescue, to set free, to feel sorry for folks. But there are times during the course of the week that you need to use wisdom and take a Sabbath unto the Lord to rest your body. The Bible says this, that the Sabbath was not made for God, but it was made for man. And dealing with the dimensions and the heights of the deliverance ministry, when you're dealing with souls, rescuing them, people that are coming out of sinfulness, people that are coming out of demonic activities and being released and set free from demonic spirits and, and being set free from bondage of bitterness and anger and sexual addictions and drug abuse and all those things, physical abuse, mental abuse, and many other things that we do not have the time to mention. That is a lot of pulling on your spirit, man. That is a lot of virtue being expended. That's a lot of strength being pulled from you. And God wants you to spend time alone with Him so that He can replenish you. The Bible says that Jesus, after he fasted 40 days and 40 nights, that angels came and ministered unto him. There are times that God is going to allow the heavens to open up to minister to you directly without the laying on of anyone's hands so that heaven can restore the heavenly strength. There are times that we have armor bearers and ministers that pray for us and lay hands on us after we have ministered. But think about what are they really impart, imparting into you because you were the one that imparted into them. So you need a greater source of power and influence that is untainted unmolested, not moved by its emotions, not moved by its feelings or its perceptions or its limited understandings as to what it is that God would want to do for you. 
God himself knows what it is that he wishes to make or to impart into your spirit by you separating yourself and God filling you so that when you stand before his people again, you're standing in strength. And every doorway to the enemy, God himself closes. Moses was on a mount where he was not molested. Where nothing could shake him. Nothing could move him. Nothing could cause him to become distraught. He would be focused on his purpose because God himself has dealt with him, spoke with him, equipped him, and sent him back down the mountain with instructions and forewarnings and made it very clear what he could expect in the camp of the Israelites when he descended the mountain so that he would be prepared to deal with what he had to deal with. Never expect the people to be connected to you to that level or degree. They will never, for the most part, be able to comprehend or understand what a leader in God goes through through how God deals with them they will always think that the leader is in a place spiritually and mentally at times that seemingly has left them behind and let me say this even when God gives it to you to speak something that you believe is going over people's heads Understand this, still speak it. Because you're not speaking to their intellect. You're not speaking to their minds. You're speaking to the Holy Ghost or the spirit man that dwells on the inside of them that will grasp spiritual things. And although they may not comprehend it then, they will comprehend it as they grow and mature and they will call the Holy Ghost, will recall all things to their remembrance and let them know why a thing was spoken. And in that moment, they will surprise themselves because the word will be regurgitated in their spirit man. And it will stand up in the proper moment, in the proper hour. And it will say exactly what God intended for them to get. Many years ago, the Lord spoke this word out of the scripture to me. You may not understand what I'm doing now, but later you will. And here it is many years later. Didn't understand what the Lord was doing then. But now I understand the journey that I had to go on to get to where I am today in the Lord. And the making of a leader is never an easy process. It's a process that could be filled with days where people don't understand you, don't recognize you, cannot understand your logic, your decision-making process, or the God, or your relationship with God. That they cannot fathom or understand. But does that diminish the purposes of God or the purposes of a leader? No, all the more it increases. The stick to itness and the stability of a servant of the Lord that is willing to be processed in the prayer chamber alone 
not with other parties, but alone with the Lord to come out, to be around the masses to whom God has called you to be around. An extreme dynamic. Now listen, Moses delayed to come down out of the mountain and the people gathered themselves together. Once they saw that Moses had delayed, now they're going to feed off of the strength. Let me reverse that. Now they're going to feed off of the weaknesses of each other's mentality and make a gross, erroneous assumption that Moses is now gone. But yet... The very thing that surprised me with this entire text and this entire story is that they could see the visible glory cloud of the Lord which has descended upon the mount. But yet, they know that that glory cloud was the very cloud that led them out. And the abilities of God, how he sustained them in Egypt, and through the Exodus process. But yet their minds have not clicked over to walk in faith. So now they pray. They draw, they draw from their weaknesses what their next steps should be. They determine within themselves what their spiritual course would be. Since Moses is no longer here, it appears he has forsaken us. We know not what about this God that has delivered us. So now, let us get up together. They gathered themselves together unto Aaron, Moses' brother, and said unto him, Up, make us God. They were just delivered from Egypt, an idolatry society. So first thing, let's deal with their assumptions. Their assumptions are the killers, or assumptions are the killers to any good logical way of thinking. It's a destroyer of good morality when not given to competent rationale. They assume Moses led them out to forsake them. What they did not understand was that God was doing something in Moses for them to help to better their lives. When people assume certain things about a leader whose heart and intent is for God, and secondly for the people, they would make the gross assumption and error that the leader is against them. And any good that you will do to attempt to help them will always be met with opposition with anger, with rebelliousness, with discord, with disgruntledness, and major pushback. Because they cannot see the heart of God on the inside of a leader that only desires to help them mature and to batter their lives. And come! to a peaceable, meaningful, beneficial, blessed relationship with God. How many of us as leaders expend a lot of time and energy just on that one major area? How can I strengthen the brethren 
How can I cause their faith to increase? How can I cause their walk to be better? How can I help to improve their mental state and their spiritual state and their home life and their personal lives and their career and their educational pursuits and, del and cause them to be free from the things that have plagued them, things that keep them awake at night? How can I minister to them to the point that worry is no longer an issue? How can I help them to get over the pain and the agony that was thrust upon them against their own desire and their own will? How can I show them my heart? That my only desire is for things around them to improve substantially and meaningfully. They can reflect back and see the overall results of God. Whenever we are walking through the process and God has given you a vision and has placed upon you the mantle, you want to see progress. Any person that makes an investment wants to see a meaningful return. We are investing the words of God into the lives of people, and God is demanding not asking, demanding for a return. God is demanding a return. And God himself wants that return to be made meaningful. And every wise leader that has a heart for God labors to that end. This is not about us. But this is about the people to whom God has put us in servitude to. That we want to see them grow, mature, develop and become people after the heart of God. God wants us as leaders to remove and to eradicate the spirit of assumption and rebelliousness and lack of godly sensitivity because the ultimate goal is that God wants the people to be so connected to him that they will see and understand where the leader is. I remember when I was first saved and came to the Lord, I was in the Naval Reserves drilling once a month. And there were Sundays that I was away drilling and I missed being in the house of God. And I would break away at some point during the day, usually at my lunchtime or for about or about 10 or 15 minutes, and would just go and pray and read a scripture and sit quietly before the Lord. And often during those quiet times, hear me clearly. God Himself would speak to me and share words. His word with me. And in the excitement of my spirit, after my drilling day was over, I would call a friend and talk to them and say, Listen, this is what God told me today. And they would listen attentively. And there were times that they would stop, whether on the phone or even in person, and they would start chuckling or laughing and say, William, it was if though you were in service this morning, because everything that was preached about is what 
you just communicated back. And I would be in awe with God. But when you have a heart for God, and a heart to know where your leader, spiritual leader, your pastor, is in God, God will cause you in your private times alone with him to catch and to grasp what God is saying so that you are in tune, lock in step with God, that assumptions are removed. Relationships, when God speaks to you, it kills assumptions. And it causes you to be in a place with God, connected to the leader as they progress in God. But when God causes you to be in lock and step with the leader, it brings about a new level of humility in you towards God and the servant of the Lord that cause you to see that they're only speaking the mind of God. And under that ministry, for the entire time that I was there, because God did the same thing over and over and over again when it pertains to me being away drilling, that I was in lock and step with the vision that was in that pastor. And the entire time, my tenure there, under that ministry, until God himself released me to the beginning stages of my ministry, to be trained in ministry, and to come to the realization of what he called me to, that pastor knew 